What's up Vikings, Coach Vaughn. Welcome to this part three with the most overrated kettlebell exercises. Today we're gonna get into heel raised squats. Now, is there a problem with this? Not really, because the claim is it helps you keep more of an upright torso and takes more stress off your low back, making it more quad and glute dominant. So, do I believe you can do this right? Yes, but when people have the wrong mindset, it's just a lower body exercise, that's where it goes into an overrated mindset. You need to learn how to use your lats, obliques, core muscles with your breath, using your diaphragm breathing correctly so you don't put all that compression on your spine. And then secondly, if you're wearing cushy shoulder shoes that already have an elevated heel, aren't you kind of rendering it useless if you're already putting another insert in there? You might as well be squatting with high heels. And so the Achilles tendon, the nerves in the soles of the foot are all gonna be blinded because they don't know what to stabilize. I like squatting with a flat soled shoe or squatting barefoot. And that's what I recommend when we're going through this. So what's kind of, so just like last time, if you wouldn't do it with a 48 kilo kettlebell, you probably shouldn't do it with a lighter kettlebell as they stated in the first episode. So um, set up just as you would with a kettlebell swing, chopping at the hips and said, now swing it hiking and just popping it up up to your chest, get the handle just below your chin right here. And what I see now more than ever online are people flaring the elbows. This puts all the stress in your neck and traps right here. So you're already putting the kettlebell over your toes here. You wanna keep the kettlebell over your midfoot and keeping the elbows down. That way your lats can engage and you could stack your hips over the shoulders nice and tight. From here, just point out the toes a little bit if you need to, to get more room. Depends on your femur head. If you like squatting more neutral or a little bit more out, me personally like squatting more out, having a long femur head. So what I'm gonna do here is inhale, and then I'm gonna grunt coming up. Show you again. Notice how my spine stays nice and tight when I inhale through my nose. And you just set it down. What I like to use as an analogy is think your abdominal is a soda can. Uh, when you step on a soda can and it's not opened, it can maintain that pressure. So you're not breathing for a little bit as you go down. So you're inhaling through the, your nose and then grunt as you come up. There's no point in grunting at the top of the squat. So then I wanna put my money where my mouth is now, doing it with a heavier kettlebell, show you my setup. I like to get a nice solid root right here and tilt back. Now, how can I get a little bit more heel raise? Do an offset squat. So just offset this going from here to here. Get five, five each side if you want to. Keep that shin vertical. Really dig that toe down like you're squishing a bug. And then you can gently set it down. So those are your claims on how to get a better goblet squat. If you wanna do a heel raise, do an offset squat, but really own your foundations first, knowing how to breathe with your abdomen. So if you'd like to see more, check out my book, The Kettlebell Weights, for which you're gonna do swings, cleans, snatches, squats, get ups, windmills, all in detail, all in one source. You can get it now on amazon.com. This is Coach Fawn signing off. Hope you have fun with that.